off to get ready. Prince Harry leaves Calworth Park after he and best man William spend the night at Five Star Hotel as royal fans arrive in Windsor. Today is the day Prince Harry and Meghan Markle will marry and the royal groom is already on his way to Windsor Castle with up to 100,000 fevered fans gathered outside in glorious British sunshine. Harry enjoyed his last night of single life with best man Prince William at Calworth Park. A five-star country housed a stone's throw from Windsor and was swept out of its gates in a black dot people carrier as he went to get ready. The 2,000-plus excited guests have also started to arrive at Windsor Castle for the biggest royal wedding in Britain since Prince William married Kate in 2011 with more than 21 million UK households said to watch and 23 million expected to tune in from America. St George's Chapel will be packed with royals including the Queen and Prince Charles who will take Meghan to the altar in the absence of her father Thomas Markle. Her mother Doria Ragland, 62, will take center stage as will Hollywood royalty including George Clooney and his wife Amal, tennis star Serena Williams and many of Meghan's Suits co-stars. Princess Diana's son's whirlwind romance with the U.S.-born actress, 36 has captured the public's imagination and they will become the Duke and Duchess of Sussex when they marry. After a secret six-month relationship the couple went public and later confirmed they got engaged in November when he proposed while roasting a chicken in his Kensington Palace flat. Their big day is finally here after a week of turmoil for Meghan after her father pulled out at the last minute and her estranged relatives flooded into the UK to cash in on her big day. Tens of thousands of royal fans are in the Berkshire town to catch a glimpse of the bride and groom, as police have effectively created a pound 30 million ring of steel around the castle in a massive security operation. Many slept on the streets and more have left their homes in the middle of the night or traveled from across the world to see them. Revelers wearing wedding dresses, Union and American flags and other outlandish outfits have been popping champagne and Prosecco since 8 a.m. or earlier as they toast the happy couple. The official 10 Downing Street Twitter account posted a message to the couple from Theresa May, saying, my very best wishes to Prince Harry and Meghan Markle on their wedding day. To all of those joining the national celebration with street parties and other events, have a wonderful day. The Archbishop of Canterbury, who will be officiating the ceremony in Windsor, tweeted, praying for Prince Harry and M's Meghan Markle today. May it be a day of joy and celebration as they commit their lives to each other before God and may we all share in that joy with them. Meghan has spent her last night of freedom at the Cliveden House Hotel around 25 minutes from Windsor Castle where she will next see Prince Harry at the altar of St. George's Chapel. Last night she looked stunning as she arrived with her mother Doria Ragland, 62, after enjoying afternoon tea with the Queen. Meanwhile her husband's to be and Prince William enjoyed a walkabout through Windsor to meet the thousands of well-wishers who have gathered to see him get married. As she walked into the hotel wearing a 1,350 pounds navy roll and Murray Barwick dress she grinned as she told waiting royal fans that she felt wonderful, thank you ahead of the biggest day of her life. Beaming Meghan also gathered her closest friends, her dress designer and hairdresser to join her in 1,500 pounds a night rooms last night. This morning she will leave for Windsor Castle with Doria before she travels alone to St. George's Chapel where she will finally marry Prince Harry as millions watch around the world. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle will be the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, a title not handed out for more than 150 years. The Queen has conferred the titles on her grandson and his bride-to-be as they prepare to walk down the aisle at St. George's Chapel, Windsor today. The royal groom was given a dukedom, the highest rank in the British peerage, to mark his marriage to Meghan Markle. American former actress Meghan will now become Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Sussex on her marriage at the much-anticipated ceremony in St. George's Chapel, Windsor Castle. Harry also received Scottish and Northern Irish titles, becoming the Earl of of Dumbarton and Baron Kilkeel, which means Meghan will become the Countess of Dumbarton and Baroness Kilkeel. All titles are in the gift of the Queen and it was up to the monarch to choose which one to bestow on her grandson and his new wife. St. George's Chapel has been adorned with floral displays ahead of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle tying the knot. The first pictures from inside the historic building show foliage white peonies, white garden roses and other white blooms adorning the front of the organ loft, towering above the seats.
A centre large will serve to frame the royal couple as a congregation of family, friends and well-wishers watch them take their vows. Two large arrangements also sit either side of the high altar in the Windsor Castle Chapel. The display, which also features fox gloves with branches of beech, birch and hornbeam, also extends to outside the chapel, lining the west steps and surrounding the west door through which Meghan will enter the church. The display has been carefully crafted by floral designer Philippa Craddock. At the end of a dramatic week, sources said Harry and Meghan had just wanted to focus on their big day. They are just so in love and while it has been a hugely emotional week for Meghan in terms of her father, who she is still deeply concerned about, they now want to focus on the day, they said. It's a huge moment for them, and they just want people to enjoy the day. Another added, honestly. I have never seen him so happy. He is just besotted and cannot wait to make Meghan his wife. With Mr. Markle, a former Hollywood lighting director, recovering from surgery to fit a heart stent, Kensington Palace announced yesterday that Prince Charles would walk his future daughter-in-law to the altar. Sources close to the prince, who will wear a mourning suit, said he was deeply touched to have been asked. It wasn't something he raised at all. The couple came to him. They said. The source added that Charles had met Miss Markle several times and appeared to have struck up a very genuine bond with her and now her mother. Both Ian and the Duchess of Cornwall seemed delighted by their meeting with Miss Ragland on Wednesday at Clarence House. Miss Markle has always insisted she wanted to arrive at the chapel on her own, even when her father was involved. She was also insistent that she would not be given away. It is believed that, as a divorcee in her thirties and a feminist, the future royal believed it wasn't appropriate. At noon today, Charles will await her at the start of the choir, halfway down the 15th century chapel, instead of the steps of the building. Miss Markle will arrive in the castle's quadrangle with her mother at about 11.25 am in one of the Queen's cars. Miss Ragland, a social worker and yoga instructor, is believed to be the only member of Ms. Markle's family attending. Miss Ragland will then transfer to another vehicle and be driven to the Galilee porch used by the royal family, where she will arrive shortly before Charles and the Queen. Miss Markle will be joined by her bridesmaids and page boys, including Prince George and Princess Charlotte, and will be greeted at the steps to the west door, decorated with exquisite spring blooms, by the Dean of Windsor, who will walk ahead of her into the church. Last night Mr. Markle told U.S. website TMZ he gave the arrangements his blessing. He said he was honored and grateful that Charles had stepped in and his daughter had called him personally to tell him. Kensington Palace said, the order of service was produced before it became clear Mr. Thomas Markle would be unable to attend the wedding. Some aspects will be different to what has been printed. Stand by me will be among the hymns in a modern order of service as Prince Harry ties the knot with Meghan Markle in today's long-awaited royal wedding. The plans for the ceremony at St. George's Chapel, Windsor, include modern wording of the marriage vows along with the hymn Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer which was played at Princess Diana's funeral. Diana's sister, Lady Jane Fellows, will also give a reading. Meghan will not promise to obey Prince Harry in a contemporary version of the vows using modern language such as you rather than thee. The Duchess of Cambridge did not promise to obey Prince William in 2011, and neither did Harry's mother the Princess of Wales in 1981 when she married the Prince of Wales. In a nod to the transatlantic nature of the marriage, the most relevant Michael Curry, head of the Episcopal Church in the United States, will give the sermon. However the order of service was produced before it became clear that Meghan's father, Thomas Markle, would be unable to attend, and still mentions his name. There was not enough time to reprint the 600 copies of the 20-page A4 order of service. Although the ceremony in the Gothic surrounds of Windsor Castle's chapel is deeply religious, the service will use the words from the more up-to-date marriage service from Common Worship, 2000, which features modern language, such as you rather than the or thou. The prince and his American former actress bride will pledge themselves to one another for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death us do part. In the declarations part of the service, they will also promise to love, comfort, honor, and protect one another and be faithful to one another for the rest of their lives. Kensington Palace said like any couple getting married, Prince Harry and Ms. Markle have taken a great deal of care in selecting all elements for their service. Yesterday, 
Archbishop of Canterbury Justin Welby, who will officiate, said Prince Charles was someone of great care and affection. He added, he's a very warm person and that he's doing this is a sign of his love and concern and support. I think it's wonderful. It's beautiful. Bishop Michael Curry, primate of the U.S. Episcopal Church, who will give an address, said different worlds are being brought together by the marriage. Millions around the world are watching but America has been gripped by Meghan Mania Dash and U.S. broadcasters have gone to extraordinary lengths to provide the best possible coverage for their viewers. With prime broadcasting spots given to British TV, American networks have annexed several guest houses and hotels around Windsor Castle. NBC is said to have taken over the McDonald Windsor Hotel, opposite the castle with a team of around 300. The broadcaster has built an Olympic Stadium-like studio on the rooftop to achieve the best backdrops and have a view of the castle in the background. Yesterday Meghan Markle's co-stars from the TV legal drama Suits appeared in the studio to tell viewers back home how she revealed her romance with Prince Harry. Meanwhile, rival networks ABC and CBS are said to have removed windows from rooms at the front of the Hart and Garner Hotel at great expense to create the best shots and a two-story temporary media center has been set up on the long walk in Windsor Great Park solely for U.S. journalists to broadcast to fascinated viewers back home. Broadcasters are devoting huge amounts of airtime to programs before and after the wedding, and most are broadcasting or streaming the ceremony live. In 2011, the wedding of Prince William and Kate Middleton was watched by 23 million Americans even though it was the middle of the night for many in the U.S. But viewing figures are expected to be much higher for Prince Harry and Miss Markle's ceremony today.